Hello guys and welcome to a new UDK tutorial, an explosion trigger. Now today I'll just be showing you a basic trigger that causes an explosion. Okay, and basically this is what it looks like. It's not very big, it's not very scary. Um, and I'll actually show you exactly what it does. Now exit out of the kismet. Start the game. Now what this does basically is there's a marker here, a barrel. And as soon as you walk over to the barrel, explosion ahead of you. Well, very poor explosion, but explosion nonetheless, because the laptop I'm using isn't great. Apologies for that anyway. Escape out of this. Now we're going to open a new level. I'm just going to get rid of that. Now I have a new level here prepared, just a normal daylighting map. First of all, we're going to want a game start. Now, lucky enough, we have a game start right here. I'm just going to click and drag this out somewhere here. Now, I'm going to want to go into the content browser and just get a barrel. Any old barrel will do. Stack mesh, just as a marker, really. That's all. Just so you know where the trigger is. There's the barrel. Click and drag. Simple as that. Minimize, just drag it out here somewhere where it's nice and on its own. Now you're going to want a trigger, so we're going to right click, add actor, add trigger. Once the trigger is added, just obviously maximize it a tiny bit with the space bar and the scaler. There we go. Now, once that is selected, you want to go into Kismet. Now, in Kismet, just new event using trigger, and you're going to want to just say touch. Now, that means when you touch the trigger, whatever it's connected to will activate or deactivate or something like that. So in that case we're going to want a toggle. Now new action, toggle and basic toggle. Just drag that up there. And I want to connect it to touched just to turn on. Okay and you're going to want a player variable. A new variable player, player again sorry. Once you have this, sorry, I just maximized this. Once that is there, just go to the properties of all of the players and just uncheck all players just to keep it nice and neat and tidy. Now, once these are connected like so, the player to the instigator and the toggle to the turn on. I'm just going to move this out of the way. Once that is out of the way, you're just going to minimize Kismet. Now we want an explosion. Now, any explosion will do. I'm just going to use a, a, a random explosion here. And it's going to be a particle system. Now, particle systems are just moving systems, pretty much. It's just spontaneous moving systems. I'm going to right click and save this before I move it in. Uh, and the one I'm using actually is Vehicle Death Explosion. It's just going to be a big explosion. I'm going to drag and drop that in there. Okay, the main thing to worry about here is just to make sure it doesn't trigger when the game starts and the easiest way to do that sorry I just moved this over here, the easiest way to do that is F4 on it for the properties you want the emitter drop down first and then you want to drop down the particle system component and then the submenu particle system component again you're going to want to turn auto activate off so it doesn't instantly go off at the very beginning now once you have that done keep this selected go back into Kismet we're going to want to right click and add a new object variable using the emitter, first of all. Once that is added, you're going to want to add that to the target of the toggle. And then we're going to want an event. The easiest way to get this event with this still connected, new event using emitter 1, and go down to particle event. Basically, what this does is just an event that happens, it's just to signify that the, explo that the explosion is happening at that time so we're going to just move that down there as well connect that to the event on toggle now also after that we're going to want to modify your health when it, when it happens so new right click new action actor modify health leave that up there just move this like that connect it to the toggle out the target is the player and the instigator is the emitter. Sorry, my lap this laptop I'm using seems to be quite slow, but I shall be 
finish fairly shortly anyway now as you can see from earlier on the code isn't exactly you know it's it's not scary and yeah, daunting so if you wanted to make an explosion in your level it's very easy now we're going to want a damage type maybe I don't know scorpion self-destruct an amount maybe 50 just for now just to see if the damage works and the radius you're going to want about maybe 360 degree angle Now, that's pretty much all the properties you need for this. The emitter particle event, we're going to max, sorry, trigger count of one, because in my opinion, it only really happens one to make it once, to make it halfway, halfway believable. You're not going to just have tons of explosions going off over and over again. Well, you could, just for a bit of fun, but, you know, for realistic purposes, you probably don't want that. So you can just change it to one. It's the same as the trigger touch. Mass trigger count is usually one. If you're having obviously multiple trigger counts, you you could put it to zero and it will literally just be any. But it will start to go a bit crazy. I'm just checking the properties here just to make sure they're all okay. Modify health is okay. Image particle effect is okay. Now, pretty much that's all you need. Now, I'm just going to go in and test this. Now, UDK has been funny to me all day, so I wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't work very well. <laughs> now. Sorry, this laptop is weird. Now, another thing to remember before you start your level, just because it's a 360 degree angle, you really don't need to, it to be facing any sort of a direction. But if you did, the arrow, there's a green arrow there on the particle effect, and you can just use the slider just to slide it in certain directions. It's very simple, and uh, it's not that scary. Now, once you have them all in place, I'm just going to do a quick build. Now, once the build is finished, just go back in and then just click play. And if all goes to plan, this should work pretty well. Now, explosion went off and I lost health. And also as well, if you really want to see it work properly, you can go to View, World Properties, okay, and then just change the game type here to UT Game. Just change them both here, Game Type for Pi, UT Game as well. And X out of World Properties, and you can try it again. And you can see the health function working. Now, see, health 50%, and everything works properly. And thank you very much for taking the time to watch this tutorial and watch many more tutorials on online design teacher. Thank you and goodbye.